Nuclear fuel is more than a million times as energy dense as coal or gasoline and emits no CO2 when you burn it. You can hold a lifetime supply of fuel in the palm of your hand, yet this fuel's got a really bad reputation. Um, incidents like Chernobyl, Fukushima, Three Mile Island have all led to a feeling of distrust when it comes to this energy source, but what if it just came down to bad design? I mean, not all airplanes are made safe or equal. Back in the 1940s and 50s, the US military was gaga over the atom. The US, and as soon as the Navy managed to get pressurized water reactors to work inside their ships and submarines, the Navy wanted a nuclear-powered bomber. I'm sorry, the Air Force. So the engineers were a little bit upset with trying to make seven feet of concrete shielding fly, and so they decided that a liquid fluoride thorium salt reactor, which didn't need the shielding or the massive cooling system, would be a better option. A series of prototypes were developed and tested at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Kentucky, and they all helped to prove this reactor's design's efficiency and safety. Um, they ran for a number of years, all the way up until 1965, and uh, were very successful. Um, so pressurized water reactors are called pressurized water reactors because when you use water to make energy, you need to keep everything under really high pressure to be efficient. And that's great and all until you spring a leak. And then all your water can boil away instantly, expanding in size up to a thousand times. So when you look at a reactor today, that huge cooling tower, all those massive generators, all the backup systems, everything is there to keep the fuel from melting. Now, in a liquid fluoride thorium salt reactor, or lifter as they're more easily called, um, you intentionally melt the fuel and dissolve it into fluoride salt. And by doing so, you can get rid of a lot of the pressure design issues, and you can design the whole thing like a big sink. So at the bottom of the sink, you've got a little drain, and it's plugged by a chunk of frozen salt. And it's kept frozen by a little electric fan that's blowing on the outside of it. If the power goes out to your plant, the salt melts, and the fuel from your reactor drains into a passive cooling tank, completely shutting down the process without any human intervention. Now, uranium is also really inefficient. Uranium starts out as rare as platinum, and you have to mine it and then purify it into these little ceramic pellets. And those ceramic pellets are actually damaged by the radiation they give off in the reactor. So a conventional reactor is best going to get maybe 1% of the energy out of the fuel they burn, leaving behind hundreds of tons of waste that you have to store safely for tens of thousands of years. Um, <laughs> not a great thing to start out with. Lifters, on the other hand, dissolve their, their fuel into salt, which is intrinsically impervious to radiation. That means you can keep your fuel inside your reactor for much longer, burning it up to 200 times more efficiently. The amount of fuel that you're left over with is much smaller, and the waste only needs to be stored for 300 years. And guess what? 80% of it, after 10 years, is valuable medical isotopes you just sell off to everything else. Um, <clears throat> so thorium is also nice because it's as common as lead. It's four times more common than uranium, and it's found all over the world. Anytime you're digging up rare earth metals, you're digging up thorium, and there's hundreds of tons of this stuff just stored in mines all over the world because nobody can use it right now. It's just kind of an annoyingly radioactive waste. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, imagine the potential. So on top of that, you know, I mentioned the, the fuel from the uranium from the uranium fuel reactors having to last for 10,000 years. Well, lifters can actually burn that waste fuel in their uh, in the reactors, and you can generate tons of electricity and alleviate that 10,000-year period of having to store everything. So imagine clean electricity for your house and for your industry and city, but we're still going to need liquid fuel. With enough energy, you can suck CO2 out of the air, combine it with oxygen and hydrogen that you get from your water, and make liquid, uh, liquid fuel and ammonia for your plants and your vehicles. So there you go, man. A reactor that's 200 times more efficient than uranium reactors, a million times more efficient than coal and gas. You can fit it in an airplane, and this thing was designed back when the original pressurized reactors were around. Every time the human race has encountered a new form of energy that we've been able to uh, utilize, it's caused profound changes. It happened with fire, it happened with coal and oil, and it'll happen with the atom. This fuel is so energy dense, and it's so common, we will never run out of this stuff. Imagine what it, could, what it could mean for the human race. Thank you.